girls with their nails done now. When it comes to home theaters, having a dedicated room is ideal, but do you actually need a dedicated space to have a high performance home theater? Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech. And I'm here to tell you, you do not. We're here in my den and this is my home theater. Stick around. Let's start with the room. As I mentioned, this is my den and it measures at 12 and a half feet deep by 15 foot wide with a little over seven foot ceilings. Actually, it's wider than 15 feet, but the other side of the room is where I store my recording equipment and my studio light. Now my home theater configuration is a 7.2.4, meaning I have seven bed layer speakers with two subwoofers and four speakers in the ceiling. Up front, my speakers are the Arendel Sound 1723 towers, and these towers have quad eight inch woofers as well as a one inch soft dome tweeter. The center channel is also from the 1723 line, but only has two 8-inch woofers with the tweeter in the middle. These are some speakers that I reviewed a few years back and loved them so much that I could not send them back, I ended up buying them. They have a full frequency response, which is amazing for music, but does wonders for home theater as well. In the back as my surround speakers are the Arendo Sound 1723S Triaxle Surround Sound Speakers. Now these speakers radiate sound from the front of course with the 6.5 inch woofer and the tweeter but also from both sides as well with a 4 inch driver that radiates sound to the side both left and right so that makes it awesome for surround sound where if you're sitting in between both speakers and out of the direct path of their front facing drivers, then these side firing drivers will radiate sound in your direction, which is great because high frequencies like voices, for example, don't have as wide of a dispersion pattern as the lower frequencies. So no matter where you're sitting, you don't miss out on the rear surround sound effects. The side surrounds are the bigger version, the 1723 line, with the 8 inch woofers, but these have their triaxle speakers disabled because since they're directly radiating to the listening position, we don't need to have that enabled. In both corners of the room between the surround speakers are hexagonal decorative tiles which also have some sound absorption capabilities. And these help to reduce the sound reflection from the triaxle drivers of the rear surround speakers. They also have some LifeX light strips behind them to act as decorative or mood lighting depending on how I feel. In the ceiling, in the rear, are a pair of Martin Logan Helos 12 in-ceiling speakers with a 6.5 inch driver and aimable tweeters. Up front are a pair of Martin Logan Electromotion IC speakers with a 6.5 inch driver and a folded motion tweeter. They're also angled to better aim to the main listening position. Both the in-ceiling speakers in the front and rear have a minimum plus or minus 3 dB range of 47 Hz, while the surround speakers have a minimum of 58 Hertz. All the front speakers are capable of a plus or minus 3 dB minimum frequency response of 34 Hertz. So all my speakers can be crossed over at 80 Hertz for movies. For music, I disable the crossover and run the front speakers full range with or without the subwoofer, depending on how I feel. My display is an ultra short throw laser projector and it's the LG HU85LA. Now this projector is super bright and has one of the lowest throw distances of any ultra short throw laser projector on the market. For movies, it has great motion, contrast, and vibrancy, but for gaming, it's not so great with a really high input lag. Paired with it is a 100 inch elite screens, ultra short throw, ambient light, and ceiling light rejecting screen. And this combo makes watching pretty much anything super immersive and creates a great cinematic experience when watching movies. 
Rounding out the low and frequency response of my speakers are two of the best additions to my home theater, a pair of Mario Cubes from GSG Audio. Now these are DIY subwoofer kits which you assemble yourselves which is very rewarding and makes for a great story. And they provide the kind of full authoritative bass that you don't just hear but you feel. It's something I was missing without even knowing it, but once you experience it, you just can't go back. They blend so well with my speakers and just brings the entire experience together. On the lower shelf of this custom entertainment stand that I built, I have the previous gen PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. With of course the switch up top keeping a lookout. Now let's move on to the rack with all the equipment that powers and drives these speakers as well as the audio and video sources. Let's start with the brains of the operation, the processor, which helps bring this entire thing together. Now I recently installed the Trinoff Altitude 60 which is a 20 channel preamp processor and this replaced the audio control Maestro X7 which was in my rack up to very recently. Wait, do you see that? Hold on one second. Now the Altitude 16 is one of the best processors available on the market today and it can process up to 20 channels and it's a PC based architecture and since it's a preamp processor it needs dedicated amplifiers to power the speakers. And the amplifier powering 5 of my bed layer speakers is the Parasound A51 power amplifier. This amp has gobs of power and is capable of driving any speaker I throw at it. And it's THX certified. The amp powering the four in-ceiling speakers and two rear surround speakers is the Outlaw Audio Model 7000X. This replaced my Outlaw Model 5000 amp and wanted to do that with an amp that had balanced XLR inputs. Next is the rack mounted amp powering my subwoofers which is the Behringer NX6000. This here is a very popular amp for DIY subwoofer builds and it's the one I chose to go with the ones I built. Below that is the Furman Elite 15 power conditioner and I use this mainly as a source of triggering my external amps especially the NX6000 because that does not have a 12 volt trigger built into it. My video sources are an Apple TV for streaming content, a Panasonic UB9000 Blu-ray player for UHD disc-based media, as well as a PD reference media player, which I have ripped all my existing 4K disc to so I can play them from one single source and not have to change discs around anymore. It's really convenient. And connecting all of these network enabled devices to my network is an Arachnus 24 port switch. Sure, I'm using nowhere near the 24 ports right now, but I have room to grow. I also have two Cloudplay T9s for intake and exhaust at the top and bottom of the rack. And I replaced each of the three fans inside with Noctua fans so they're more silent. And these come on once the temperature inside the rack rises past a certain degree. Now that we've seen all the equipment, let's talk about the actual experience. But before you even do all that, just let me preface this by saying that you definitely don't need this high level of equipment to have a great experience. Most of this equipment is dictated by one, uh, things I've reviewed and things I've been exposed to. Plus, I guess a bit of my actual need to spoil myself, I don't know. But uh, you don't need this kind of equipment to have an awesome and amazing experience. But yeah, let's get into it because I think that this setup sounds better than any commercial theater I've been to in recent memory. And that includes IMAX and Dolby Cinema. The only thing I think the Dolby Cinema has over my uh, home theater is the actual tactile response of um, transducers in the seat which I don't have so you actually feel your seat rumble when uh, that bass nose hits and my room doesn't do that besides the tactile effect you get from the 18 inch Marty cubes. People have commented that the speakers will overpower my room because they're so big both my mains and the subwoofer but I can assure you 
that is not the case. What they do though is provide effortless performance no matter what volume I'm listening to my movies or music at. There's a saying that there's no replacement for displacement and that is definitely true I think in the audio space because the subwoofers with their 18 inch drivers are some of the best I've ever heard. They are tight and they blend in so well with my mains and based on the measurements I've taken at the main listening position, they dip well below 20 hertz in this room with room gain, which is awesome. And speaking of the room, there are some constraints admittedly that I have that would not be here if I had a dedicated space. For example, uh, now that we have a little one, I can't exactly play uh, my movies to the same volume that I did before, especially at nighttime, because that would be very bad. There's also the constraint of the level of acoustic treatment that I can implement in this room. I can't put stuff on the ceiling and the walls aren't necessarily conducive to having panels hung on them. So that's a constraint that I've had to live with. And thankfully it's not uh, as big of a deal um, in this room because we have so many soft surfaces here. So there's not many reflections um, besides some key points like the ceiling, for example, and maybe the back wall, but I can live with those. Another constraint of this room is the seating. Right now we have a sectional which sits about six or seven people comfortably and that's a bit less than we would have ideally. So ideally we could seat say 10 or so people or more potentially and uh, seat them comfortably so that we could have you know watch parties when we want to watch movies that you know a bunch of us enjoy and just have a bigger gathering from time to time, especially now that COVID's behind us. Theater seating would definitely help with that. I'll tell you what though, Valencia sent me two of their Oslo Ultimate Theater seats to review and those were so comfortable and just an incredible seating experience that I decided that I will save them for a future iteration of my theater. So now I'm back to the sectional for the time being. The constraint of this room extends to my speaker placement as well, both the surrounds to a lesser degree, but also my in-ceiling speakers. But thankfully, and this is why I actually got this, the Turnup Altitude 16 with its 3D remapping uh, technology was able to uh, make that a non-issue. It essentially has the ability to combine the output of multiple speakers to place the sound where it should be with the actual placement of the speakers being less of an issue. I mean, it can only do so much because it's not magic, but for my room, which is um, doesn't have egregious uh, speaker placement, uh, it does a really, really good job. And I think adding that is one of the things that helped take my room to the next level because now I have just such an amazing experience that anything that I play on my system sounds incredible, both the bass response, transients, everything, and the surround sound panning is actually incredible. I really cannot say enough good things about it and it is an expensive piece of kit but I definitely think it was a worthy addition to my setup. And that brings me to another issue I have which is reliably controlling all these devices. Now right now I've had a Harmony Elite remote control and the hub for a few years and with my previous equipment it did a great job. So with my Denon it did a pretty good job and with the audio control it did a good job as well. But that ecosystem or that system is pretty much dead in the water right now and it will get no more development from Logitech. So I've tried to see what's a, a good way to replace it and control my devices and I've tried IP based solutions like Rumi Remote but I don't find it incredibly reliable either. So the search is still on for something that will control my system reliably, something outside of Control 4 or so for example. So those are all the issues that I've identified in my room. So even though it's amazing and I absolutely love it, it is certainly not perfect, but I don't think the perfect room exists and 
if you keep on chasing perfection, then you'll miss out on the here and now and enjoying your system for what it is. So be mindful of that and make sure to take the time to actually enjoy the experience that you've worked so hard to create because at the end of the day, that's what's most important, not chasing some lofty goal, some pie in the sky. Can I tell you though, when I first put the turn off into my rack and set the system up, calibrating it and everything, and I played Ready Player One, it's like I was hearing that movie for the first time. It was absolutely visceral, a visceral experience by any measure. Sound is an incredibly big part of watching a movie and I will tell you that having it sound like it did, I was really scared that I was going to break something either in my house or my speakers themselves, but that's what they were meant to do. That's how they were supposed to sound. It was just so, so almost jarring how different and how better it sound when I had the turn off in my system. The transformation is kind of like that first time I used a dedicated amp in my system. It just made it sound so much better. So much so that I find myself re-watching movies I've seen many times because they sound so much better now and the Zapiti media player helps in a tremendous amount with that because now I don't have to switch discs when I want to see a different movie. I just have to go to my home screen and search for the movie I want to watch and then there you go. No, I'm incredibly happy with myself as it currently is and I'm very thankful that I can call something like this my own. But in the spirit of things, you know, analysis and recommendations and all that, the question is, or a big question is, what device or change has had the biggest impact on my setup and what would I do first with the gift of hindsight? I think that's a question for another video. I mean, I've talked enough as it is in this one. So if you want to hear that, my answer to that, if you want to see that video, then you better, you know, subscribe because, you know, a bunch of you, I'm sure, haven't subscribed yet. But share your thoughts or questions in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't for more home audio and video content because TV season is coming up and in the next week or so, I will be getting the 2023 TVs in to start making videos on those. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching and until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood villa man saying be safe and peace.